Hi, this is Paul Miller from London. Really enjoyed the podcast. Keep it going. Thanks very much. Hi, and welcome to another episode of InsurTech Business Series podcast. My name is Damola. And my name is Fulu. Damola, how have you been? Really great. Uh, it's been an interesting uh, couple of weeks so far. Um, I mean, since our conversation with Frederick dropped, uh, I mean, it's been quite interesting. Uh, a lot of the conversations that we've had and, and the interest mm. in the industry and that that is you know, one bit that um, i'm quite interested in you know you know digital transformation and, and all of that so uh it was a it was an interesting conversation with with frederick and and definitely looking forward to even this one with our guest today what about you how has the last two weeks been it was fine funny um frederick's conversation sort of you know um, helps to shape my, or helps me in a way with you know my um, discussion at the CIN conference. Okay. I was you know able to. It was similar to what um, you know the um, keynote speaker said, okay. and it just you know, there was just a, a flow. Uh, Thanks to um, Frederick, uh, it was so the conversation was actually very 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 helpful for those that actually not listening to it. We still have the link up on our pages, especially on LinkedIn. So you can go and, um, you know, refer to it if you're still wondering how to maneuver the age of digitalization. I think it's yeah. a good one for you to have an understanding of how exactly to go about it. Yeah. The ecosystem is supposed to be building and all of that. Yeah. 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 So um, talking about that, um, our conversation today, you know, is um, about micro insurance, which I think is now the new way forward. Because that's the goal. If we are trying to calculate, you know, the numbers of population that we have, we also need to factor in the numbers of population that can be trans. I mean, that is, it goes beyond just saying we have social numbers. How do they translate to money? Mm. Am I able to milk money from these people? Am I able to get money from these people? And I, like I always say, the bank is saying we're banking the um, unbankable. So what's going on with the insurance and um, this is where this king of insurance, king of micro insurance mm-hmm. company, yeah. he's worked with a micro insurer. He's left. He's going on to build his own, um, you know, micro insurance company, and um, he's focusing on agriculture, which is good. And I think that's actually the gold mine in Kenya at the moment. Playing micro insurance in that space just goes to show that that's a good market penetration. So, um, yeah. his name is Louis Kilitia, and um, of course, he'll be joining us shortly. But before then, Damola, what do you think? I think that um, the future of, of insurance on the African continent, um, not, not just in Kenya, is, um, is going to revolve around using technology to mm-hmm. scale insurance and Mm-hmm. The insurance that you're going to be scaling is not uh, what we have today, but micro, mm-hmm. you know, such as insurance, simple products, you know, that people can purchase maybe via mm-hmm. uh, their telco, via their bank, or using a USSD, you know, and things like that. But definitely looking forward to sharing this conversation and, and, and you know, picking the mind of, of someone who has played in that micro insurance space and is even looking to do a lot more. It's going to be a conversation where you learn a lot about what can be you know and and the opportunities that are in that space so so yeah we'll share that immediately after this break nice to have you here louis how have you been hi victoria thank you for giving me this opportunity so I've been well, uh, still working on, on this space, and uh, I'm glad to uh, join you today. Yeah, um, the pleasure is mine. Um, so I'll be asking you like, a couple of questions. And um, first, we'd like to know who Louis is, who is Louis, what does he do? Uh, thank you so much. So basically, Louis is a firstborn of six, uh, born and raised in a remote village uh, in Kenya, somewhere 200 kilometers away from the city. So okay. he's passionate about uplifting those around him and uh, a community at large. 
So currently I'm uh, using my risk management expertise uh, to create insurance mm-hmm. solutions to the underserved community uh, in, in Kenya and in Africa at large. Oh wow, that's that's interesting. So how exactly did you, you know, come about the title the king of micro insurance? I mean, that's like that's that's like a deal, a big deal. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell us yeah. how. Actually, yeah, that's that's an interesting question, uh, and and thanks for asking. So basically, when I was in micro insure, uh, my good friend uh, and uh, and my CEO then uh, Richard Lepley, actually. Okay branded me king louis yeah uh, and soon everyone was calling me that in the office yeah so i i, I became king louis but basically uh, the king of micro insurance is more of an aspiration for me uh i want to be able to lead uh, africa uh, uh, at large in solving uh, african problems because what, what mm-hmm. i realized for a bit of long time uh, we've sat back especially as uh, professionals around around the continent and watch other people come and do the same thing that we can actually do so i'm actually taking uh, initiative to go actually go out there and solve these problems based on african perspective because we've been through these challenges uh, and i think the best solutions are often come from uh, from within and, and not from from without so the king of micro insurance is more of an aspiration of where i want to be in the next uh, couple of years oh okay 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 I, i think it's a it's a good one really and um micro insurance just seems to be one of the way to go now in terms of you know insurance distribution especially to the low income earners so yes i think that's um interesting so could you tell us a bit about your work with micro insurance and what you currently do i know that you work with micro insure but currently what do you do and you know what have you done in that micro insurance space i usually tell people that i think micro insurance chose me uh, and, and i didn't actually mm-hmm. choose micro insurance because what happened uh, it started back when i was in uni or well, me and my friends were working on uh, on s- several projects to present at the end the, so that we can graduate and uh, the projects we were working on uh, two of them especially with one one friend of mine called alfred so when we were working on this project we kept coming across micro insurance references but then we didn't even know what micro insurance was, was all about mm-hmm. And then when we dig we dug deeper we realized actually whatever we were trying to do was actually micro insurance and there was one particular company which was already doing stuff that we were trying to solve that's how we researched and came to know about now uh micro insure and because of these uh, in- interlocking uh, interests uh, I decided to pursue mm-hmm. a career uh, in micro insurance and that's how I joined micro insure uh and started my career uh, over there as, as an actuary uh, analyst so In general, uh, I've worked with micro insurance as you've mentioned. I've also uh, worked with uh, with Pula. Uh, so on one hand, uh, micro insurer uh, deals mostly with health insurance, life, a property kind of insurance. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the other side, uh, Pula deals with uh, insuring smallholder farmers against adverse uh, weather uh, and other systemic risks that normally uh, happen to farmers. So I started off mm-hmm. with micro insurance, but I felt there was a bit of me that was still missing. Uh, I hadn't quite pursued the 360 degrees of, of micro insurance. And after being there for a while, I decided to try the other side of, of micro insurance, which is now a uh, crop uh, and agriculture insurance. So I've been there for a, a bit of some months, but recently I've decided to pursue my own interests by uh, okay. venturing into consulting in, my, in the micro insurance space. And then I'm also working mm-hmm. on a micro insurance startup that, that will be coming up uh, very soon. Oh, wow. Congratulations in advance. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So, um, okay. So, I, I know that you've spoken about, um, you know, having like a three sixty degree approach in um, micro insurance, and you, I know that micro insurance is actually budding. We haven't got into that point where a lot of people are aware about micro insurance. So, how exactly would you describe the development and growth of micro insurance in the insurance industry? So, well, micro insurance uh, started off from NGOs and donor funded projects. The projects that were just done to help communities uh, with no commercial inter- interest whatsoever. Uh, but what has happened uh, over time, uh, it has evolved and uh, been proven actually to be a sustainable business. For example, with the guys like uh, 
micro insurer uh, and pooler uh, i mean of, of bima and, and the rest so right now where we are in terms of the micro insurance space these are actually sustainable businesses which uh, people are, are pursuing so the main difference between micro insurance and the traditional insurance uh, is basically in all levels of, of insurance uh, there are majorly uh, three levels that I, i like to categorize when, when looking at this is that there's a there's a product so this involves the risk covered you know the premium the benefit and how you approach this particular product is different from 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 any other kind of product because the risk you are covering so traditional insurance would look at a guy has a car you know has a house uh they are covering their, their business or they're giving them education insurance but yeah. in micro insurance you're covering a uh, basic uh, health or you know uh, this guy uh, is doing a small business somewhere and uh, tomorrow they'll be uh, they come and being thrown away by, by, by the government or their their small shop will get burned down or they're in the slums there are all sorts of uh, security risks so the stuff that you're really trying to cover is very different from the, the traditional uh, insurance so how you go about pricing that it's entirely a, a, a different uh, a different approach then the next thing uh, is processes uh, and process this involves how do people on board onto these products how do uh, mm-hmm. they actually claim for insurance and and how, the reason this is different is because uh, you imagine a, a person with maybe just a feature phone they don't have a smartphone to actually purchase your insurance how do you reach out to them you can't use maybe agents because it really doesn't make a commercial viability uh, how, how do they actually claim you don't want to tell these people to submit a, a thousand documents just to to get to get to get them uh, to give them their benefit because first of all the benefit is probably very small you don't want them to invest a lot and secondly they don't even have these documents you go asking for death certificate or i don't know which form get i don't know filled by who they don't have all these uh information at hand so how do you go about ensuring this with very minimal very minimal uh, information and still making sure uh, that the product actually works and then uh, the last category is distribution uh, you can't distribute yeah. this product the same way you dispute uh, in, in, in any other kind of products so for traditional insurance you have a guy in a suit you even give them a, a car or they even have a driver because they're going to sell insurance uh but when it come to micro insurance you're selling products uh worth a dollar or even less than a dollar how do you make commercial business out of it so you need to use efficient business model to actually make sure uh it doesn't cost you uh, a lot and and uh, it makes commercial sense so it's different in in all these three dimensions when you compare it with the traditional insurance now that you mentioned distribution what do you think and how do you think that micro insurance can be widely i mean sold especially um with the aid of technology how do you think we can you know distribute this to all of the low income um earners i know that currently you are doing something in the agricultural space which is um fantastic having to go to the um you know rural areas to have um farmers attention have you know marketers attention and all of that Yeah, that's a very good question because whenever you're talking about micro insurance uh, distribution is uh, literally the key uh, the, the key thing to look out for so for me right now as it is but to go and sell micro insurance tomorrow the best way to go about it and what we've been doing with different organizations is using a familiar brands we don't want to go sell individually you don't want to show up to a person and tell them hey you want to buy this insurance yeah. you want to buy this insurance so you need aggregators you need a pool of people who are already in one platform they are brought together by a common interest so this could be say their, their circle or uh, their table banking uh, where, where they meet uh, every week uh, or this could be their bank or uh, you know their mobile phone company so you need you need aggregators uh, and the reason you need aggregators is again as I said uh, you need efficient uh, distribution models and another thing is the, the element of trust remember these are people who never had insurance before uh you should yes, probably yes, if, they, yes. if they have had they probably the, the only thing they've had is basically negative press about uh, insurance so it becomes very hard to actually sell, sell insurance individually to to these people so but when you go through a familiar brand uh they've already bought something from them or they're already getting some sort of a service then the conversation becomes much simpler and even when you're going to them you don't even go mostly with your brand uh you don't if you're if you have xyz insurance you don't say i'm xyz insurance you actually use the proxy which is uh, say the organization or the aggregator you're working with to actually reach these people so that is the immediate 
way and the, the, the most practical way to go to, to business tomorrow. But in the long run, this we all go to mobile. Uh-huh. This partnership okay. don't last. Today, to, to, today you, you sign up with a big telco uh, and then tomorrow the CEO yes. decides no, this project is worth it and cancels the contract. Then where do you go? Yeah. So owning, owning the customer and uh, having the 100% control of the customer is uh, is uh, what you call the, the medium term. And now that goes mobile. Right now, uh, Kenya has uh, more than 91% mobile penetration. In Africa, it's about 80%. That's yeah. good already go into the market with so the more the, 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 the more people become familiar with the micro insurance and these distribution models uh the, the most slowly but slowly they'll start engaging with you directly uh through mobile uh and, and creating effective business models uh through mobile phones uh whether these are feature phones or smartphones that's that's why i see the future wow. is it talks about mobile phones and having like 100 percent of your customers under you I know that micro insurance is also heavily reliant on partnerships currently. If you're not partnering with telcos, you're probably partnering with microfinance banks or, you know, um, like you mentioned, aggregators earlier. So, you know, in a bid to aid um, actual distribution to this population, what would you say would be an alternative? Should these partnerships fail? Are there other unexplored distribution channels? Yeah, yeah. So aggregators, uh, as I said earlier, is it, it makes a lot of sense and it's uh, an easier business model to go into because you go speak to a bank and they agree to uh, ins- offer insurance to their customers. Then all of a sudden you have 100k customers and, and you're good. So your question is, what happens if this guy wakes up tomorrow and says, you know what, uh, this is not working for us and we are thankful. Yeah. So where I see, uh, especially in Africa, as the immediate way to go after that uh, is what I mentioned earlier. It comes down to, to mobile. You may know of Blue Wave, headed by uh, Adelaide Otiampo. They're actually trying to do this, where yeah. they they reach out to customers directly through a USSD platform, and customers are able to enroll totally without depending on any other kind of brand. What wow. that happens is that it becomes slightly difficult, because then you know, it's harder to convince people to just go di- dial your USSD and start buying. But if the products are uh, lucrative, if the products make sense for people, yes, you might spend a slightly higher uh, marketing cost than, say, if you partnered with one bank, but it will eventually uh, it will eventually reach there. So I guess, I guess the question is, who best can entice the, the customer? Because at the end of the day, they want, to see, they want to see value. They want to have a reason to actually dial that code or go yes. get into that app and actually do so what, what sort of incentives are you going to pl- put in place to actually make sure people are actually uh, buying uh, through mobile directly uh, from you. So mobile phone is definitely the future. I think this yeah. is actually going to be a good one for a lot of organizations, especially startups, to penetrate that particular um, insurance space. And, you know, um, having to move away from... Currently in Nigeria, we have about... Um, the last time we did the analysis, it was about 0.5% penetration of insurance. So if we are able to have this control over, um, you know, the micro insurance space, I think that would further push the numbers, which is actually a good one. I think mobile um, onboarding is the way to go. And like you said, incentives for customers, you know, to come on board. So apart from all of this, what would you describe as the most challenging factors faced with the penetration and growth of micro insurance in your country and world at large? Hey, this is Brian Falchuk from Boston, Massachusetts in the United States of America. I want to give a shout out to the InsureTech business series, Falumi and Damala, what you are doing to help move the industry forward in the African continent, but also more broadly for the industry at large is so incredibly important. As I think about the future of our industry, it's conversations like the ones you're having that will help us move forward. So congratulations on the success of the show. Please keep at it. So there are definitely a number of factors which are affecting micro micro insurance. Uh, and number one is regulation. Okay. So micro insurance for a long time has been treated the same way as other kind of tra- traditional products. Now, as I just explained earlier, is that these are completely different models. You have to think about it differently. How you perceive risk, uh, how you uh, come up with distribution. Uh, it's it's, a, it's an entirely different uh, kind of kind of aspect. And I'll give you a very good example. So the regulator would say, 
micro insurance commissions for guys doing micro insurance is capped say for example or or, or, or a general product in general is capped at 10% for example part of your micro insurance product has an aspect of a, of a general product and then they would say it's capped at 10%. So 10% of insuring a car which uh which web insurance is like 500 uh dollars is won't, won't be the same uh, as uh 10% of one dollar when it comes to to micro insurance yeah? yeah so you need to look at these things differently so they would say uh you're taking when, when you try taxes maybe slightly higher margins like 15 percent they would say okay this is this is this is, this is not allowed so you try working with a, a percentage of small premiums then it's fine it becomes very difficult and that's this how you see maybe some companies are struggling even uh to scale or, or, or even to be sustainable then another thing is how you go about capitalization, how you go about even getting those product notes approved, the, the actuarial calculations, or there's what you call the, the incidence rate. How you calculate them is entirely different uh, from, say, traditional insurance. So when all these things are not figured out, they're not defined, you have no basis really to say, oh, well, I'm creating my product against this backdrop. So it becomes a very difficult challenge. Yeah. Uh, and and, and uh, so, like, for example, the, what I said earlier about capitalization. So it, it, right now, or, or at least before last year, an insurance, if, if you need to form an insurance company, you need about, so in, in Kenya, shillings is like uh, all, almost half a billion shillings. And this, that's a lot of money for, for you to, sure. it, to be able to start off a, a company. So if you just want to pursue micro insurance alone, you find that doesn't really make sense. So another thing is that investors really think micro insurance is not a sustainable business model. Uh, they think it's, uh, it's, it's a risk basically mm-hmm. you're getting into. And, and you understand because mm-hmm. nobody really wants to talk yeah. to poor people and expect to make money, at least on first glance, before you can get into the specifics and realize, okay, this is a business model. This is an actually working business model. From the start, many, many of them would see it as a loser. Yeah. So you wouldn't, you, you find many people, many investors are not willing to come as open and invest in micro insurance. Uh, then uh, the other thing is a lack of data. So you want to insure particular people who've never been insured before. No insurance company has ever insured them before. So there's no, there's really no data to base your, your, your pricing uh, or your product development on. So this has forced uh, many organizations, so before you start a project, you even do pilots to, to pick up the data and now use that to justify your project or what you call a dry runs. All these are meant to first generate data, do a small project, and then I use that to scale. So that's, that's another thing that has really hindered uh, this space because no one has ever insured these people before. So you really ha- don't have any data to, to base your, your, your product development. So to overcome that challenge, what people are doing is that you conduct a dry run uh, or you conduct a pilot so that then you can use that data to inform uh, your, your, your product development and now use that to actually scale. So if you scale gradually because you want to acquire data in a consistent manner, you don't, you don't, want, to, you don't want to go big with the wrong assumptions and then end up messing everything. So yeah, those are the three challenges that, that I've seen now with, with, with the sector so far. Wow, there's like similar challenges that we currently have in Nigeria, um, except for the fact that um, I think regulation has more, we have more issues with regulation than the other parts of it. For data analysis, we, you know, in terms of partnership with um, telcos and microfinance banks, for instance, we've been able to you know manage that. And then, um, luckily, with the CPN and PVN, we're able to get some of these customers' data. With everybody that banks in Nigeria, it's expected that you have, you know, bank verification number. So I think that has, you know, helps. Then, in terms of investments, like you mentioned, I know that Bima currently had an investment for, you know, their uh, micro one of their micro insurance products. And I know that you're, you're about to start your own, you know, launch your own startup. So how exactly are you accessing the impact of increased competition, you know, um, distribution channels and new technologies that, you know, this is bringing to the market? Uh, that's actually a very, a very interesting question. And I'm actually gl- glad you asked this question because, well, uh, let's look at it this way. I wouldn't really be concerned about uh, competition. Because even with all these ma- mushrooming uh, insurtechs and, and micro insurance startups, and, and not, not not just Bima, uh, there's so many startups coming up right now, insurtechs, uh, and claiming to be uh, solving problems uh, within within this space. But we are barely sc- scratching the surface. I mean, less than 10% of Africans are insured. Uh, that leaves us with more than a billion people still without insurance. 
so there's there's a big yeah. space to play so the problem is that these startups reach a few thousand customers and then they make a lot of noise here and there fundraising left right and center you know like you've seen a lot of webinars happening the, the last couple of, of months <laughs> but but really uh it tends to paint a picture there's so many players like the the, the market is not almost but basically there, there's so many players and it kind of paints the wrong picture from uh from what's happening on the ground on the ground right now you go to my village i guarantee no no one person has heard of any of those micro insurance startups all of them combined put put in one platform mm-hmm. yeah so for me that gives me the the motivation to keep on going we are still very very far from reaching where we want to go because even if you are to combine all insured lives from all those startups you realize it's still a fraction uh, of where we actually we should be going it's not really uh, an issue for me when, when I look at this industry in any case it's good because uh if say bima say pitch to safaricom for example uh and they say they are in micro insurance space when they go there pitching tomorrow uh, about a partnership then they've done some bit of work for me because now they already know what micro insurance is all about so it becomes easy uh if say uh richard or or, or rose or uh, uh simon from oko pitch somewhere uh or did a presentation or a conference or, or a webinar and talked about micro insurance uh when the next time i'm talking about it people are already familiar with it so they're more likely uh to, to listen so I, I think it's good that you have all these uh, uh startups coming up and and raising and expanding uh, i think it does more good in this space than actually bad for the individual players okay so um before we let you go i'm going to ask you what what do you think would be your outlook for micro insurance in the current market in short to medium term what should you know players in the particular market expect and what would you advise they do in order to get micro insurance right okay yes so for me so in the in the well especially like if, if you can focus on, uh, in, in kenya recently uh the ira the, the kenya insurance regulator approved uh, the micro insurance regulations this means as of this time you can open a, a company specifically for micro insurance uh and, and, and like uh say 2019 uh, and, and the years before so that definitely opens up opportunities uh so guys can now uh, they, uh, they can now actually form uh this small insurance focused specifically on on, on micro insurance so i expect to see a lot of mushrooming more insurtech small micro insurance companies coming up uh and, and trying to you know to solve the same challenges we are doing then uh for the existing companies uh what you're going to see you're going to see now the existing micro insurance players are going out to invest more because there's now more confidence uh into investing into this space you can see what recently happened between micro insure and uh, uh and the micro insurance company merger that yeah. to become yeah. the micro insurance uh, company because people now yeah. have confidence actually now start investing uh in, in into this space so in terms of uh, the technology that uh models that I would advise well I would say so there's one aspect that has really the conversation keep on rotating around the same thing and we've actually done the same thing uh, in, in this talk is that about distribution how do we distribute yeah. how do we uh you know make sure insurance reaches uh these people but there's an area which has often been neglected and that's claim processing once you do this distribution you get to a, a big telco which has 30 million uh, customers then you have this you know then you start getting busy yeah because you're insuring that million people so uh less even if even if you get a, a million or two out of that you start becoming a very busy person and uh what happens is that after selling then comes to the the fulfilling of of the promise which is claim payment so you start receiving yeah. crazy claims claims are coming day in day out and I've, I've actually experienced this uh from my experience getting so many claims like the health the health space you get so many claims and you realize you probably need to expand your team your, your claims team and what i've seen is the company now start cuz even if the claims are automated they're not 100% automated there's, there's still a lot of of documentation coming through and being reviewed you know manually by people looking at documents and deciding whether this claims valid or not i think claim processing some some area that has been ignored and probably needs to get more attention like how do we automate claims how do we you know minimize say uh, human intervention by like uh, cut it by like almost 50% so you don't have to review yeah. every single document to to approve whether this claim is valid or not and i use the learnings of uh, the likes of lemonade uh, outside there 
to see yes. Uh, yes we don't do copy paste don't copy paste the solutions but that tells you automation is actually possible so the claim processing bit i think something that needs to be paid a lot more attention and think about uh, automating that space wow. for, for sustainability okay. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. I like that you mentioned Lemonade because I've been following through and it's so amazing the time they use payout claims. Like it's really, really, really impressive. And like you mentioned, if Lemonade can do it, and then it's possible for all of our claims processes to, we really don't even have an excuse. So it means that we can actually automate some of our claims, most of our claims processes, which is good. So, um, Louis, if people want to contact you, um, you know, and ask about your startup, how exactly do they reach out to you? So, uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So, you get uh, on LinkedIn anytime. Uh, be sure I respond in probably less than five minutes. Then uh, I could uh, put down my 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 email, which is a uh, kinuthia dot francis at gmail dot com. The easiest way, let me say, is just LinkedIn. Just inbox me on LinkedIn. And we'll start okay. the conversation now from there. Okay. So thank you very much, Louis, for coming on our podcast. I mean, it's a pleasure having you here. Um, we hope to have these conversations, you know, with you from time to time, especially as it relates to micro insurance and, you know, other parts of insurance. So once again, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And uh, this is actually a uh, really good work that, that, that you guys are doing, you know, getting this information out there, having these conversations. Uh, that's that's how you move an industry forward. Together, we educate the masses, and uh, the the micro insurance stories, you know, go round and round, and uh, more people know about it, and uh, more people invest in it. Uh, I think that's how we move we move forward. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, investing your time in this. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to the news update. My name is Opeoluwa. And here are the headlines. NICOM announces demise of the ex-commissioner for insurance, Emmanuel Chukulozie. Insurance pushes for NICOM to postpone recapitalization deadline. Consolidated Hallmark introduces claims tracking platform to enhance customer experience. Now the details. NICOM announces the demise of the former Commissioner for Insurance, Emmanuel Chukulozie. The National Insurance Commission, NICOM, has announced the demise of the former Commissioner for Insurance, Chief Emmanuel Okechuku Chukulozie, who passed away on the 7th of November 2020. Chief Chukulozie, who was also a lawyer, headed the commission between the 18th of November 2004 to the 20th of March 2007. He supervised the recapitalization exercise in the industry in 1997 when the federal government mandated insurance companies to raise their capital base from 150 million to 2 billion for life companies, 200 million to 3 billion for general business, 500 million to 5 billion for composite companies, and 350 million to 10 billion for reinsurance companies. Insurance pushes for NICOM to postpone recapitalization deadline. Insurance operators are capitalizing on COVID-19 pandemic as well as the NSARS protest impacts on the ongoing recapitalization exercise in the industry and are requesting for the extension of the deadline to 31st of December 2021 as against the 30th of September 2021, earlier slated by the regulator. Besides that, they are also asking the National Insurance Commission, NICOM, to drop the phased segmentation of the exercise to which they are to provide a minimum capital requirement before the deadline of 31st December 2020. As directed by NICOM, any company that fails to comply with a minimum paid up capital of 50% of its capital requirements based on their class business, life, general or composite may be restricted from certain classes of business effective December 2020. Consolidated Hallmark introduces claims tracking platform to enhance customer experience. To enhance customer experience and make claims processing easy and seamless for customers, Consolidated Hallmark Insurance PLC has introduced an online claims tracking features in its website. With the new capability, customers of the company can now track their submitted claims online from any location and at any time. 
This allows the customer's individual corporates and brokers to easily follow up on their lodged claims in various classes of insurance, including motto, home, marine, oil and gas, and several others in the general insurance business category without having to fiscally visit, make calls, or subject themselves to cumbersome paperwork. Inna Nawama, Chief Technology Officer of CHI, stated, This has been achieved through a recent system upgrade, which ensures an improved turnaround time in service delivery. This is all we have on the news updates. Do stay tuned. Now over to Damola and Fulumi. Hi, this is Paul Miller from London. Really enjoyed the podcast. Keep it going. Thanks very much. Hi, welcome back. Micro insurance, like I, I said at the beginning, is, is 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 something huge and it's it's going to play a huge role for the future of insurance on the African continent. Uh, I mean, we are in Nigeria, right? But there are a lot of learning points that we can take from the Kenya market, South African market, and Louis joined us from Kenya and he shared a lot of insights as regards, um, you know, micro insurance and you know his experience and how it's different from from you know, the normal uh, way that we do insurance. Uh, what, what, what really just jumps out for me is, is I mean, him buttressing my point at the beginning as regards technology and you know, mobile technology, you know, leveraging partnerships with telcos, banks, or even using USSD. That's the future because um, we are looking, looking at uh, the emerging markets. Those are, these are people that Low, they are low-income earners, and so uh, they might not all have smartphones. Yeah, but uh, with the regular uh, phone that can dial, you can take advantage of things like the USSD, and then they can buy insurance. They can, you know, renew. They can pay. They can, you know, do a lot of things. Add. Uh, their uh, beneficiaries and things like that. One important part of that thing of that is is the the fact that all of those pl- platforms that you're partnering, whether it's a telco or the banks, so one they have customers, they have the people already, right? And those people, mm-hmm. because they have been doing business with them for a long time, there's a level of trust that they already have in those in those uh, ecosystems and platforms. Yeah, you trust your telco because when you make a call, definitely will go through and things like that. And so it's a, it's where insurance can partner with those guys and be in the background, you know, and just ride on that goodwill that they have to sell insurance because, you know, insurance industry still suffers from that trust uh, that has been lost over the years. So uh, I think that yeah, no. leveraging a lot of those partnerships, you know, and, and, and seeing how mobile can push insurance is going to be something, uh, something huge. Hi, everybody. My name is Benton. I'm the founder and CEO of MTech, and we are based in Kenya. I am very passionate about the disruption of the insurtech space. And together with our model MTech, we are actually serving insurance platform and also white labor solutions for the industry. Please keep on listening to InsurTech Business Series podcast. And I hope to see all of you at the conference in December. Talking about that, I was even going to mention that um, the, the last conference, the just concluded conference, you know, um, Nikon was invited to come and, um, you know, have like address um, the professionals at the forum. Mm, okay. And um, one of the key things that we were able to take on was the fact that Nikon has agreed that they will be more flexible with micro insurance, mm. and um, which is a good one because. It makes us realize that they've actually seen the fact that there's there's more more gold mine in micro insurance. If, if that's pardon me for saying gold mine, but it just seems like that's the future of insurance, especially in Nigeria. If we keep saying that our population strength is over two hundred million, mm. and you know we are having a penetration index of zero point three percent, it means that there's something wrong. We're probably just skewing the top of insurance. Mm. We're just you know taking from the top of insurance. We've actually not gone deep into the waters. Mm. And so encouraging micro insurance from our regulators, mm. we are likely to see changes in the industry by people who had probably played in that space before 
I'm looking. I'm. I'm. Tr- I'm looking to see that maybe the um, Axamansat, um, you know, Leadway, they have Cornerstone. People that actually played in those space before will begin to come out to, you know, partner with organizations like Micro Insure, um, partner with other um, maybe Bima. Who knows? This will probably be an opportunity for Bima to also penetrate mm. the Nigerian market mm. as they've played in the space for Ghana mm. and you know other um, um, nation or other countries. So. I think it's a good one and you know having this conversation at this point in time it should be very nice for um, a lot of people to actually listen and know how exactly it is that we can use micro insurance to you know ensure the uninsured mm. it's, it's interesting that you mentioned um nicom and i mean you at the conference you spoke at the conference are there any other things that you saw or heard at the conference that you think that uh, listeners can can benefit from as regards uh, developments that we are, we are going to be seeing in the industry uh, are there any talks around from nicom for example as regards uh, you know some of these uh, guidelines maybe for my uh, for micro insurance or even insurtex okay so we know that we have um, guidelines for micro insurance but these guidelines have they are not um, flexible, like I mentioned earlier. Okay. They're very rigid. Okay. So now, Nikon's commitment is that we're going to be more flexible about micro insurance because it, it feels like um, the current guideline kind of stifles um, mm. micro insurance. Mm. So you are not exactly free. So they're not saying you can't do micro insurance. They're just saying before you do micro insurance, you probably will have to sell your left kidney, <laughs> right? So now. We're going to be more supportive when it comes to micro insurance okay, because that's good. as we have realized from all over the mm. world, micro insurance seems to be like the current goal. Mm. And that was what I mm. said earlier. Yeah. Like, it, like it's the gold mine. Mm. So if we're saying that there are people that are living be, um, below one dollar per day, mm. those are like the major part of the Nigerian population mm. if we're refusing to accept that fact. Okay. And so how exactly do we sell insurance to people within that band Mm. and those are the uninsured as as it stands Mm, today it seems like the entire um corporate um, and middle class has been saturated so much that they don't even see the value of insurance it looks like you're begging them literally Mm -hmm. to buy insurance so now how exactly do we partner with people who have been able to penetrate that space a lot of people now own mobile phones. Mm. I've forgotten the um, percentage. Uh, I was privy to the number, but I think we have 143 million Nigerians with mobile phones. So imagine partnering with a, a telco and you are able to access almost those 143 million Nigerians. Selling micro insurance through telcos would actually give you the numbers, would convert to premiums, and then of course we'll see growth in that particular industry. So for me, I think it's honestly high time for Nikon to do that. And I'm happy that they are also seeing that. And um, I think from there we'll probably be able to get, you know, some of those changes, mm. effective changes in the industry, because I think, uh, not I think, um, most of us, that's the operators, actually fear Nikon more than <laughs> any other corporate um, organization in in the industry. So yes, if it's coming from Nikon, it means that we'll be seeing a lot of changes mm. within the space. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's mm. interesting. It can only bring positive changes and improvements, right? Because I mean, even right now, we, we see in the industry, like, for example, Zenith, uh, insurance um, and Axam and Sad, for example, as well. Yeah. They are already partnering with telcos, you know, and uh, and stuff like that. So, we'll, with an improved guideline and commitments from Nikon, I think that uh, all of these things can even go further. I mean, we have some other countries where uh, people can actually purchase insurance with their with their airtime credit. So, I mean, those are things that yeah. that could be possible. So, these are some of the conversations that we are looking to have you know at our upcoming conference the short tech business series conference it's going to hold on the 27th of november it's, it's fast approaching we are doing a countdown already the theme for the conference is uh, innovation and partnerships for sustainable insurance you know and we're going to be talking to a variety of of speakers from 
different parts of Africa, even outside of Africa. We're going to be talking deeply about simplifying insurance for the emerging market. We're going to be talking about how um, fintechs can also play a role in improving penetration and, and improving uh, the way people buy insurance. And we're also going to be talking about opportunities around you know customer experience and, and the distribution yeah. part of the insurance uh, value chain so it's going to be an interesting and packed uh, event and it's free <laughs> so very great yeah everybody is allowed to participate yes yeah, so uh, we we, uh, we, are, we are hoping to have as many people come in to really just learn um, and, and you know we are, we are quite interested in learning we're talk- interested in 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 spoiling innovation and also networking as well so those are some of the things that um, this conference will help you bring you so you learn from people on on some of these panel discussions and presentations and that would definitely spur up innovation or you know in your in your company where you work or if you are you get inspired to start up something and and, and just get that thing off the ground you know because the opportunity is, is huge and there is high time that we we as Nigerians as Africans we start creating our own solutions for our own country for our own continent you know yeah. you know for Africa by Africa you know so that's why we're having the conversation during the conference and we are inviting everyone. You can get the link to register on our various pages. You can get it on Twitter at Insure365. You can get it on um, our LinkedIn Facebook and, and, uh, and Instagram, Instagram as well. And now on Instagram too. So um, it's important for you to register and for you to participate. We need to push and move the insurance industry forward. It's important for us to, you know, engage in all of this conversation for us to see how we can contribute to our various economy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most most importantly is the fact that uh, if you look at the penetration uh, of insurance on the African continent, it's about 3%. So there's opportunity you know, in the market. So that means that, um, and that's why we're talking a lot about micro insurance because that mm-hmm. can be leveraged to scale. It's simple insurance. I mean, I mean, just off the top of my head, I mean, earlier we had the conversation with Dr. Ipemeneto uh, with Wella Health and they're selling malaria insurance, which is just about a, a dollar, you know, a month. That Those mm-hmm. are such a product that, you know, can scale easily and so those are some of the conversations that we're going to be having all right so thank you again for you know listening to this um our podcast we hope to see you at the conference don't forget yeah. to register it's mm-hmm. really important and um yeah we would have we continued this conversation you know from time to time hope you stay safe we are hearing that coronavirus numbers beginning to spike again so please as much as possible try to stay safe and um, don't forget to wear your nose mask and use your hand sanitizers thank you and um, take care stay safe